Information Center. Uh, we're located at 3501 South King Drive on the second floor, and we provide tourism, historical views of Bronzeville from an African American perspective. We're excited today because, as you know, every Friday we give an event, a seminar, an educational tour of information. And today we're privileged to have with us Mr. Elliot Hitchcock. Welcome. Elliot will be discussing today subjects all related to money, how to save money, how to make money, understanding how to use money as a tool for the betterment of your life. He will also be doing a Q&A. He has a very interesting presentation, and without further ado, I'm going to introduce Mr. Elliot Hitchcock. All right, so how's everybody? Good. Thank you. I'd like to, first of all, um, thank the opportunity with John Porter. This is really symbolic for me, standing in what used to be known as the Supreme Life Building, mm -hmm. and just knowing the success that came between these walks and how it related to finance. And so and I know you guys will take the tour if you haven't had time to do that. But starting off, we were talking about it earlier. I wanted to know what you guys saw, what you guys heard about today that drew you, that caught your attention, that made you want to come out and hear more about some of the things that were spoken about. Money. Money. All right, it's always a good thing. We'll show up for that. Yes. Well, I knew that uh, John Porter only has cutting-edge speakers here. When he said finance, I definitely wanted to see, and then you, uh, and then you worked with Greg Brown at Southside Credit yeah. Union, yeah. so I knew this was going to be okay. Uh, okay. worthy. Brown, worthy. John Porter. All right. Mm -hmm. Same as he said, talking about finance and how to better manage your money. Okay. All right. So yeah, I'm he sorry. Me. Okay. That's, that's <laughs> he right. me. Yeah, we need to do more of that. You know, me. do more of that. So that's great that everybody can make it. And I definitely. My objective here is to increase your financial intelligence. We know we're going to talk about money, but for specifically, I want to draw in on wealthy people habits versus working people habits. That concept, make sure we get that down. Wealthy people's habits versus working, versus working people's habits. We want to talk about three ways to grow money, and we want to talk about why some of the traditional senses like a 401k or a pension, why those things might not be the best option. So without further ado, I'm going to draw right in there. This is a presentation. I don't know if you guys are familiar with plenty, but it's a really unique way of getting information. So let's go and take this one. So, along with the things you read about me, um, actually being brought into this field by Mr. Greg Brown. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. Yeah, see if you can let everybody introduce themselves. Okay. So it's a small, intimate group. Yeah, I think it'd be good let's for you get into, Let's get present. Let's find out about you guys. You guys are doing the, the, the uh, Wealth Accumulation Survey, but let's go around and introduce ourselves so that we all know who each other are. Amongst ourselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Janine Terrell. Um, I got invited on the bus by this gentleman, and I have always honestly been very interested in finance and wealth, and at one time I was very wealthy okay. with finances and things, but I always accumulated that. Okay. I always did. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, my name is Fred Johnson. I own my own computer company, Rajul IT Consultant. I'm a manager What's the name of it? Rajul IT Consultant. Rajul is a original, original black man. Who was a, uh, I do my own master. I do a master tech. I've been doing it for like six years. I taught the Board of Education. I taught high school for five years. I probably don't look the age I probably look young, but I'm 40. So. I've been working with Dr. Porter for a couple of months, and Cy, and also um, Mr. Lucas here at the Brownsville location, and we continue with success. Yeah, I'm Cy Bounds. I am an early adapter, which means I've been uh, 
in, intensely involved in blogging, social media, and Google since 1998. I work closely with John Porter, and I teach distance learning. And you know, I'm involved with social media with here, John, and I also work with you know that kind of stuff here. Yeah. Well, I don't know if I can introduce myself or not. I uh, just decided to sit in. But you want me to? Please, please, okay. Ms. Allen. Uh, my name is Willia Allen. That's uh, William without the M. I was born in uh, Port au Prince, Haiti. And the way I got my name was uh, I'm one of 25 siblings. And when I came, uh, my dad said, before I came, my dad said, this kid's not going to, this kid's going to be named after me. His name was William. My mother wouldn't get, let me go through life being called William. So she took the M off. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's how I got to be called William. Uh, by profession, I'm a CPA and an attorney. I uh, practiced, uh, it, I, uh, well, when I was practicing, I practiced uh, contracts and uh, negotiations. I lectured to the University of Chicago and the University of Illinois grad students once a quarter on uh, creative financing. I've done a whole bunch of other things. I don't want to take all your time up. Now, I think that was just me and you wasn't going to let us know. <laughs> 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 she was just going, uh, I can keep this. Well, I, 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 I always say janitor. And let me tell you why I say janitor. To me, a janitor is a cleanup person. And uh, lately, I have been drawn into the not-for-profit world. And not-for-profit world with people who look like you and me, all of them are in trouble. Anytime the IRS is the State Department of Revenue or the Attorney General's office wants to close them down, they can find a reason to do it. Mm. And uh, I have started working with them, uh, cleaning them up, and that's why I call myself the janitor. Mm. All right. Okay. While I'm just Ms. Jackson, first I'm going to serve in the laws, Jesus Christ. I work with the Cook County Sheriff Tom Dark's office. I work in the prisons teaching anger management classes and drug rehabilitation. I also work with my church. I started a co-ed academy for men and women. And I really favored to work with the Black Star Project, where I work with 250 schools going in, working with our young black boys and girls and Latinos, trying to stop them from getting into games as early as grammar school. And just recently, they put me on a television show, and I spoke on behalf of the Black Star Project, but I also sit on the board for CHA and the Housing Choice Voucher Program. I got a meeting with HUD. They want me to start a program with HUD where I represent all the residents of the CHA. And you know that's over like 14,000 people. Wow. So they want to find somebody to have a passion for the people where they can give them this money so they can have their own office space, their own computer space. But I don't know if God's calling me to do that. Mm. I sit on the board, but what I really like to do, I'm a servant of the people. One day I might run for state rep, I do not know. Whatever mm. they will call me to do, that will be right. what I will do. Well, all right. I feel like it is. It's all right. So we've all been drawn. Um, so I just like you were saying, I wanted to point out, I also do a blog. It's called yourmoneyhelp.blogspot.com. And my latest article I put was called When We Know Better, We Do Better. When I say no, it's the word N-O in quotations. When we know better, we do better. I say that because a lot of times we rely too heavily on our benefits that we receive at our job. Some of you guys said that you guys are with the state or, or with the government. Some of you guys, I saw her education, was trying to put schools. A lot of times we get these pensions and 401ks and we rely on those and we say no to everything else. We don't really make ourselves, I call that being financially lazy because we like to have, and that's the reason why you go and see some of these checkout lines at these grocery stores or what have you. We still have a lot of people that should have been retired still working mm -hmm. because they got to the end of their career and now they found out their 401ks have failed them, their pensions have failed them. Go on the city side, you'll see how the mayor has to go down to Springfield to try to save some of the pensions for the teachers here. And so we're going to go into those things, but I do want to start off with 